Hey there guys, welcome back to another Pricey P Roblox Studio tutorial. Today we're going to learn something very important in Roblox scripting, and that is to detect when your part changes. Specifically, we're going to look at how to use the get property change signal, and also we're going to learn how to listen for the change signal of an object in Roblox. Sounds like a lot of fun. Let's now get started. We're going to start by adding a part to our workspace, and you can call it whatever you want with your part. Let's go and add a script. Inside your script, just enter the following lines. So basically, we're using the get property change signal here to listen for when the position property of our part changes. And we expect it to fire a signal, and we're going to connect to this function. We're going to change the color of our part. So basically, the script is going to listen for when the ball moves to a different position. It's going to change the color of the ball so we know that the ball is moving. And in addition to that, we're just going to print out the message as well, because we want to make sure. And let's give it a task wait of three seconds before we restore the color back to the original color that we save up here. Actually, up here. This line here, we're not using for now, so just ignore that line. And now let's go play test and take a look. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and move the ball. And as you can see, nothing is in the output window right now because the ball is not moving. And the color of the ball hasn't turned to red. It means that the ball has not moved. But now I'm going to go and move the ball a little bit. The ball is moving. You can see the color did not change to red. And there is nothing printed inside the output window as we expected. So there is something wrong here. And the reason is because physics related properties such as the position property and the orientation property changes, they do not fire a change event. So therefore, if you try to use the get property change signal to listen for the change signal, it's never going to happen because those properties do not fire the change event. So get property change signal is not going to work. And also, if you're listening for the change event, you're not going to find it because again, those properties, they do not fire the change event. All right, so now we understand that physics related properties are not going to work with this function. So how do we get around it? How do we code something like this so that when the ball is moving, we can change the color of the ball so we know the ball is moving? There are many ways to do it, but this is one way to do it. Here I have a while loop. Let me close this window. So here I have a while loop, an infinite while loop. And basically I'm checking the current position of the part versus the safe position of the part. So initially I saved the position of the part right here when I enter the game and I'm comparing the two. If the part position is different, then I know the part has been moved. And that is when I'm going to change the color of the part to bright red and I'm going to print a message. Yes, sir. I'm going to give it a task wait of one second before I restore the original color to the part. And also, I need to update my safe position to the current position of the part so that I can use it again later on to compare the current position of the part to the safe position of the part. So now let me get rid of this here because we know this here is not going to work. And let's give it a try now. Let me open up my output window and look at that. It already printed yes sir so it means that the position of the ball has changed one time at least and let me go and push the ball a little bit and see what happened you can see the ball color changes that means the position of the ball has changed and also you can see it printed more messages here all right let me push it some more and now it's moving and you can see it printing a lot of messages and the ball color the color of the ball changes a lot all right, so now we are aware that physics related property changes are not going to work with the get property change signal, but we do know of another way to get around that. So we're good. Now let's take a look at some examples of where the get property change signal is going to work. I'm going to insert the following code into here. Here we're going to listen for the color property of the part when it changes. We're going to print color change. Let's now play test and take a look. So immediately you can see the color has changed twice and that is because our part position has changed once. When the part position changed, it's going to change the color to bright red and it's going to wait for one second and it's going to change the color back. 
and that is why the color has changed twice. Let me now go and move the ball and we'll see what happened. So when I move the ball, the ball should change color. You see the ball change color and at the same time it printed color change many times because the ball keeps moving and it, and the color of the ball keeps changing. And this is how you use the get property change signal to listen for when the color property of a part changes. Let's take a look at some more examples. You can see I have added the following lines. So here we're listening for the anchor property of our part. When it changes, we're going to print Boolean because the value of the anchor property is a Boolean. So in this case, we're learning how to listen for when a Boolean property changes. And I have added these lines down here. So I'm just going to change the anchor property to true. Wait for five seconds and change it back to false. So it's going to kick off this, um, this event and we're going to print Boolean. Let's play test and take a look. So I'm going to open up my output window here and you can see Boolean has been printed twice. And that is because we changed it twice. We changed it up here and we changed it down here. So first we anchored the part. It printed one time because this picks it up and then we changed it back to false. It picks it up again and we printed Boolean the second time. In our next example here, we're going to learn how to listen for when a text label appears and we're going to play a sound. For example, now I'm going to touch this and you can see it played a sound when the text label appears. And here's the code for it. We're listening for when the visible property of our text label changes and we're going to connect to this function and we're going to check if the part is visible, then we're going to play the sound. The, the reason we want to check for this is because when the visible property changes from being visible to invisible, we do not want to play the sound. So we only want to play the sound when the visible property is visible. And now let's take another look at that. So we're going to go over here. And hopefully that is not my sound file that has the problem there. But take a look. We're going to touch this door so the label pops up and it plays the sound. The next example I want to show you is how to listen for when the text inside the text label changes and we're going to play a sound. So this is how we do it. We use the get property change signal to listen for when the text of the text label changes. And that's when we connect to this function, we're going to play a sound. Let's take a look. So as soon as we start it, you hear it play a sound because I changed the text and give it a few seconds. The text changes and plays another sound. The text changes again and it played another sound. The final example I want to show you is how to watch the score inside the player's leaderboard. When it reaches a certain number of points, you're going to do something. In this case, we're going to play a sound when the score reaches 10. Let's go and take a look at the script. So the script is inside the starter player, starter player scripts. I have a local script. In your local script, just enter the following lines. Here we're declaring the player, the local player. We're declaring the player leader stats and the score inside the leader stats. Here we're using the get property change signal to watch the value property of the score. So when the value property of the score changes, it's going to fire the signal and we're going to connect to this function. And we're checking if the score is equal to 10, we're going to play the sound. So basically this get property change signal is going to fire every time the score changes. So the score is going to start out at zero. It's going to fire when the score is one, two, three, but we're not going to do anything until the score is 10. Then that's when we're going to play the sound. Let's play and take a look. So to score, I need to touch this block here. Right now my score is zero and you don't see anything happening, right? So my score is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And there it played the sound. And finally, I just want to mention that everything we did here with the get property change signal, you could have done the same exact thing by listening for the change event in Roblox. So instead of all these, I could have just replaced them with this. In this case, we're listening for the change event of the part. When the change event is fired, we're going to connect to a function. 
Notice here that the change event is fired when any property of the part changes. So we do not get to specify which property to listen for. It's gonna fire whenever any property of the part changes. For this reason, Roblox recommended that whenever possible, you should use the get property change signal instead of listening for the change event of the part because this one is gonna fire so many times more than the get property change signal. But anyway, let's go over how the change event works. So here again, I have my part. When the change event is fired, it's gonna to connect to this function. On the first line here, I'm gonna print out which property has changed, and I'm gonna print out the new value of that property that has changed. And here I'm checking if that property that has changed is the anchored property, I'm gonna print out anchored property changed. If the property that has changed is a brick color, I'm gonna print out brick color changed. Let us now play test and take a look. And wow, there's a lot of messages here. So here printed yes sir means the um, position has changed. When the position changes, Notice it also changes the brick color of the part to bright red, and that's why this one was activated, it was kicked off. So we printed property change, um, brick color, property change. Brick color came from this, this uh, parameter that is, that is being passed in. So the property that changes is being passed in automatically. And then we printed the new value. This one here printed the new value of that property, which is bright red. And we go down here, we printed brick color change because when we check here the if statement it says yes brick color has changed it printed this statement right here and if you go down you're gonna see that the brick color keeps changing many times and if I go and roll the ball now you're gonna see that it's gonna change a whole lot there's gonna be so many changes here All right guys so that is how you use the change event in Roblox and again Whenever possible, if you can use the get property change signal function instead of this, you should be using the get property change signal. Before we end today's tutorial, I just want to thank a user. So in our prior tutorial, how to detect when a part is moved in Roblox, basically in this, this tutorial, we did the same exact thing. We had an infinite while loop and we compared the safe position of the part versus the current position. When it changes, we changed the color of the ball. And a viewer commented, the viewer name is Light Pro Usineer. Commented that you can use part colon get property change signal position colon connect to a function. And this is what triggered me to make this video. Even though I don't think that's gonna work because the position property is not gonna fire a change signal. But thank you for your comment. That is what triggered me to do this video. So to everyone out there, if you have a question or a comment, please do leave your comment under the video because you never know if it is an interesting topic, it may trigger me to do my next lesson based on your comment. Everyone, hope you have enjoyed the video. Thank you all for watching and we will see you again in our next video. Take care everyone, peace.